Welcome to the Decentralized News Podcast, report the major events affecting the crypto economy. I'm your host, Piter, joined as always by Ozzy. Good evening to you, Ozzy. How are you doing out there? I'm doing great. How about yourself? Yeah, I'm having a lovely morning. Thank you very much. The big news tomorrow, we got the first U.S. presidential debate between Harris and Trump. They are essentially neck and neck. So a big moment in U.S. elections and a big moment for crypto and Bitcoin, I would argue. Yeah, it's a huge moment to think about in terms of do we, uh, does Trump say something really bullish about crypto? Does does Kamala maybe change her stance on crypto or does Kamala come out and say something that's a bit more popular with the masses? Uh, Do you think there'll, there'll be a debate question? I don't even, I don't even think there'll be a crypto question on the debate. I don't know if there will be. I feel like there's a decent chance that there is. So. I would be surprised because after the first one, there wasn't. And Harris's stance is basically to have no stance. If you look at like the argument that there's a lot of media that supports her. This is a venue that was considered left-leaning. I would be surprised if they ask her a question that basically she loses on because she's not going to say much in my opinion. No, but maybe he does it something a little bit where like he doesn't answer the question directly and then spurs. Yeah. Him. That that feels very Trump style to me. And Like he takes the tour kind of? Yeah. That's it. And for him, that would be a win. If he could sneak some of those things that he might not be able to get good questions on, if he can sneak those in through answers, then... That would be something fun if they were each allowed to ask a question. Yeah. What would like, that would be great. I, like, just yeah. in terms you of... could ask the worst question. Go after him. Just ask him a question. This is your chance. You get one. Want, if you want to have a little bit of fun, Polymarkets is running a bingo card. They've got three different bingo cards for things that can be said during the debate. Sounds and, like a Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, it essentially is like a the Super Bowl. Super Bowl and so it is quite, some of it's pretty funny. And if you want to throw. Like, does it say tampon? <laughs> oh, I, no, that's, no, that's actually, that is actually a something on there right now. Uh, I guarantee you. Uh, no, it, it is. And it's a currently betting at a 29% chance that he says it. Oh, I am surprised as well. <laughs> no, go ahead. He's got Comrade Kamala is at 45% chance. Oh, um, that's low. I'm going to go bet on that one. There's actually only a 13% chance that he says crypto or Bitcoin. And there, sure. there's currently a 20% chance that he says McDonald's. Oh, my God. There's more chance he mentions McDonald's and crypto. I, I don't like my chances. <laughs> but like you said, hopefully he sneaks it in. Speaking of Polymarket right now, it's swung towards Trump. Any polling information that comes out here seems to be it's hard to it's hard to read political news in the states because it's so hyped up on one side or the other it's just hard to read it's hard to dig through it you know what i mean you really have to look at who's telling you it just takes a lot of time but right now on poly market it swung it's been swinging back and forth it was trump for a while it was Kamala for a while and trump caught up now it's 52 percent trump 46 percent Kamala harris yeah and Trump's taken a couple of swing states, Nevada, Georgia, North Carolina, and recently taken Pennsylvania, because just this morning he was not taking Pennsylvania. They just had a, the Democrats had a big event over there recently, but that's come and gone. But that's where the, it was Butler, Pennsylvania, I believe, where the assassination attempt took place. And that's not getting a lot of play out here. It's amazing how that story went away, but I would think locally, maybe yeah, it still has an impact. Yeah, whereas uh, Harris is holding Wisconsin and Michigan pretty well. She's got over a six-point lead in both states. Trump's leads in North Carolina, it's pretty strong, but in and in Georgia, the same. But Pennsylvania it, and Nevada are about four, less than 4% splits. So yeah. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a nail-biter. I think we'll, we'll be unsettled. I, I It'll swing going into the election is how I imagine it. But there's always wild cards that come up. It seems like I wonder what it'll be this year. But it seems to be a pretty clear choice if you're pro crypto or pro Bitcoin, who who you would want in office, whether you vote or not, whether you're in the country or not. And just to stamp that home, Trump launched his fourth NFT collection. He sold out the first three. This one is not selling out immediately or whatever. It's a 300 
and 60,000 piece collection at $99 each. Last week I looked at it and it sold 21,000. The other one was launched and sold out. But anyway, so he has that going on that has been going on. And then Eric Trump announced a DeFi project. So they have this world liberty financial and be careful out there. This is a super hyped area. It's full of scams. There's a bunch of fake tokens out there. There's no token live, but if you went on and just searched it, you would think there is pretty quickly or you might. So just be very careful. Not nothing, but they have 41,000 followers on Twitter. And I think, oh no, that was last week. It's up to 51,000 this week. And their telegram went up to 231 K but went down this week. That was interesting. It went down to 172. That popped harder the first week. But yeah, but that, that's pretty normal because there's a lot of bots that will often flood a new telegram and then you filter those out. So that doesn't surprise me, but definitely interesting. There's also been, you've got to be careful about links on their Twitters. The yeah. Twitters of two Trump's kids got hacked last week or in the oh. last two weeks and were shilling essentially one or another version of this token on Solana, suppose a DeFi project, definitely worth watching there just because it is. Particularly just be careful, be careful, because this is the type when something's in the media this hard, it's U.S. presidential election, right? You have people who normally wouldn't consider something like this, maybe considering getting, getting in or supporting their candidate or whatever it is. So just be careful out there. That's it. There's quite a bit in terms of just different media out there. And you can see the volume of bets on poly markets, for example, is almost hit a billion. It's at almost 800 million on the presidential election alone. So wow. that's just wild and shows just how many eyes and how much money there is on, on this election. And that's just on the election forecast. That doesn't have to do with the debates or anything like that. And so you're, you're talking about cumulatively billions of dollars in uh, interest in this election. Yeah. Another fun one or election related here. We have Donald Trump officially announcing that he's taken Elon Musk's suggestion to create a government efficiency commission and he wants Elon Musk to lead it. The funny thing about it is it's called the department of government efficiency or doge D O G E. Did you do that? That was like too, it's too much. Dude. Like, is oh, that real? there's too much. Elon, I can not believe that. Elon feeds the Doge train. He, but he, this is wild. Is it a coincidence? Yeah. That is just, that's a little much for me. It's a little rich. I was like, no okay. way. That is but funny. To, to be fair, the, the inclusion of the of in the type, in the acronym, it, it's not something you'll see off like yeah. most of the time. So it would be yeah, when it fits like that, it's also not like a big stretch. No, like to, to throw it like this, this it's great meme. It's yeah. meme material, but in terms of what the department would actually be called in a like government situation, it'd be the DGE. It wouldn't be the Do it wouldn't be Doge, it'd be DGE, like the IRS. Right. Yeah, D DGE. Yeah, like when if and when it ever happens, it wouldn't be called Doge. I understand, yeah. but it would be called Doge for sure. Now we have, interestingly, not everyone in the crypto sphere, the crypto economy is endorsing Trump. We also have Ripple co-founder and executive chairman, Chris Larson, endorsing Kamala Harris for president. So they continue to try to cozy up to big government. There's yeah. something about them. I, I, that's their wheelhouse. They need to be close with big government or government in general. So they're like all in. They're like, if it doesn't work with them, if we all have, we'll become the CBDC. It's like they're trying to be the CBDC or something. That's essentially their infrastructure is all built to create CBDCs and to replace SWIFT. And so that's their whole marketing. And so they need to be aligned with governments and banking regulation and the ones that are really big on that and that will either make or break that are the Democrats. So but the thing, if they go with the Democrats, it seems it'll be part and parcel with control and a more centralized version of crypto. You know what I mean? Ripple has never necessarily been a face of decentralization. They right. were, if you think about the Ripple, Ripple was the prime target for a lawsuit by the SEC. They're really one of the few crypto, like true crypto blockchain companies that have been pursued by by the SEC. 
most of the other t times it's been crypto adjacent companies like centralized exchanges or there's been a couple of companies like library credits but n no blockchain to the size that ripple was like xrp was in terms of tvl or or just market cap yeah that doesn't surprise me but on the yeah it didn't, it didn't surprise me either but it just goes to show it's not you know there are forces in the crypto economy that to support the democrats i've been of the opinion that this is the biggest thing affecting the market i maybe i'm biased because i'm in the u.s it's such a big story maybe not a big deal other places but i just feel like until this gets settled as long as it's a nail biter it's gonna create some volatility and also really cap the upside or open up the upside depending on who wins and it's not just there's a couple of stories i have there's it's not just me saying this we have legend mike michael Sa sailor saying republicans are way ahead of democrats regarding their opinion on crypto btc so it's not just me and then we also had a story from yeah go ahead bernstein they're a big asset manager about almost three quarters of a trillion dollars under management and they're saying that if trump's elected president bitcoin is likely to reach 90k essentially within a week or two of the election closing and then on the downside, they're saying that if Kamala wins, Kamala Harris, there's probably a 30 to 50K Bitcoin. That is a big difference. I was telling Piter that right now, if you were to buy, you're buying essentially just shy of a 40K upside and a 20K downside. So it's more like 35, 25, but Bitcoin. You can, bet on, you can bet on poly market or you can bet on Bitcoin. You, know, you gotta run the numbers. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> but yeah, it, this goes in line with what I'm thinking and putting a specific number on it, but just in general, I think we're the, assuming there's going to be more of a bull run. We're going to start from a lower point and go to a lower point if we get Harris and they cite her willing, unwillingness to even address the topics. So they really only have kind of what has the government been doing so far and has been fairly adversarial on the particularly on the democratic side or we're going to start from a thousand and then see how high we can go which i think we can approach you know 200k maybe even break it oh but, i, I but believe like, in a trump presidency situation like, especially if we're starting from 90k we're talking at we're easily talking in 250k or right around that range in my opinion probably 230 to 250. Yeah, I could see that. So yeah, exciting times, dude. I, I am going to keep an eye on the debate. It's more just curious. Harris is expected to win the debate. So if she doesn't perform well, that could rally crypto markets because it's like one of the biggest volatility issues. So if Trump kind of surges, so to speak, it really kills it. Uh, yeah, I, I it's totally agree. I, I think would, I would not be surprised. He's a dynamic speaker in that sense. And so I, I do see how but people he, are tired of him too. He's been around a while and Harris, a new face. So I could see her winning the debate and it doesn't necessarily mean it settles the election like that winning one debate, but it will be interesting to watch how she performs. Oh, it's absolutely. more interesting to watch how she performs compared to Trump. People have a lot of debates with Trump pretty. I mean, he's wild, but at the same time, he's pretty much on his stump all the time. Yeah, he's got, uh, like, looking at those poly market bets, there, there's certain words that they were, like, expecting, like, that have, like, pretty high chances of hitting, like, 90% of bets or something about China and saying certain keywords that you can just expect from him. And there's uh, obviously other wild sh shots out there unexpected. So we'll see. All right, let's shift gears out of politics a little bit. We got a little story out of Japan. Yeah. Tokyo Electric Power, so their largest electricity producer in Japan, they're looking to use renewable energy to mine Bitcoin. And that's as the hash rate is just about to hit a new all-time high. The That came out this morning. It looks like it's approaching the all-time high or hit a all, new all-time high today. I think it hit a new one recently. Even with Bitcoin in a slumping, the hash rate is still growing, which is really positive side. Yeah. And with an electricity company, like energy companies are seeing the prospect and profitability of, of mining Bitcoin. Japan's hopping on board as they're trying to save their stock market. Looking, moving on, we're going to hop into a bit of a speed run, but 
before we do please consider liking and subscribing to the show we really appreciate it it makes a huge difference to us and really helps the show reach more people and to get into our first story cardano they they've shifted to decentralized governance with the chang hard fork which went live last week this will allow it to undergo a full trans- transformation to a community-led governance model over the next 90 days, which will be overseen by an interim committee. So pretty interesting there. Yeah, they, had a rough, they had a rough bear market. They went from a top five cryptocurrency and now they're falling out of the top 10, seeing tokens like Tron and Toncoin pass them up. We'll see if this can shift the winds for them. That and Charles shaved his face, apparently. Oh, did he? Interesting. Yeah, yeah that's the big news, bro. They're not. The and he went missing. He went missing for a little while. Too. Yeah, he did. Right before the art for took a vacay. Yeah, he, they're not the only token that went through a kind of fork or migration in the last week. Polygon w- went from Matic to Pole as part of their move to the Ag layer. So this is not only like a major upgrade and rebrand, but it's also replacing the Matic token with the pool token. It's pretty cool. The It's all part of their goal to launch the new aggregated network called the Ag Layer. And just be careful about scams. The migration went by completely fine, but there might be, there's no rush to convert. And really, it just happens as you do transactions. If you hold Matic on Ethereum or Polygon, uh, ZKVM or on a centralized exchange, there might be specific steps that you need to take to migrate your tokens. Each exchange put out their own instructions. Right now, you probably can't withdraw to Polygon from your exchange at the moment. Most of them are finishing their migrations over the next day or two. I know that Coinbase is finishing on September 10th, and Polygon and on Binance is supposed to be on the 13th. So yeah, that's a, they mentioned a really good point. There's no rush to do anything. So if you're not sure, just wait, there's just no rush to do anything. Uh, there's no deadline to, so be careful out there, but yeah, Binance, which could be a catalyst has been a catalyst for many tokens. will be launching poll September 13th. So that might be good for them. Yeah. In terms but of continuing hack. on the be careful out there. I don't know. Do you want to say anything else on Binance or Polygon? No, you can go ahead. Just continuing on the be careful out there and welcome to the jungle. There's a bunch of Discord channels hacked. Now, this is just Discord, but still people throw out in, in big groups. We're talking Polygon, Avalanche, Roll Up, CK Sync, a couple other small ones, Witness Chain, Orderly, but five were hacked. So they get a control of the Discord and they just start throwing up fake links and stuff like that or links to scam you. So. Be careful out there. It's not just getting into your wallet per se. They're, they're trying to get you to come to them. You know, they have a lot of devious ways. Yeah, they do. And they did manage to hack quite a bit out of uh, Polygon, about 120K. Yeah. Yeah, that's too bad. They're talking thousands of dollars. We've seen so many stories. In, so mil- in the millions. And then you know, the stories in the billions. You know. Yeah, that's it. So it wasn't too bad. And Polygon did went through a process to make everyone right but please be careful there's the scammers are just going to get worse and one platform where scammers are known to be completely everywhere is telegram uh, you want to talk about this a little bit the ceo you remember was arrested in france he's last i heard he couldn't leave the country but he's out of jail per se and then this little tidbit came up telegram quietly updates their faq removing very strong consumer privacy sentence. So the sentence they removed was all Telegram chats and group chats are private amongst their participants. We do not process any requests related to them. So a big change, maybe they're bending the knee a little bit out of trouble. They're like, dude, you're going to be in huge trouble. You want to have a nice life? Yeah. It'll be interesting to see what happens there. That is a big change with Telegram and we'll see what happens. There's a not everyone reads the facts and there's a lot of people that operate on telegram like maybe they wouldn't if they knew their privacy wasn't they would respond to official requests potentially to give information about you so be careful it could happen and we have a kick in the dog wallets down story what, what happened here yeah the sec 
while crypto was already on a down downhill and NFTs have not been performing particularly Yeah, the dog is an NFT, by the way. This is the dog we're taking. Yeah, NFTs have not been doing well for a while. But the SEC has issued a Wells notice to uh, the to OpenSea, the probably the largest NFT trading platform, although Magic Eden and some others are definitely creeping up on their heels at this point, Blur as well. They're alleging that NFTs on the marketplace are securities. So they're signaling a potential enforcement action against the NFT marketplace, in which in my mind is absolutely insane because it's like issuing a Wells notice against eBay or against an auction house because that's essentially what OpenSea is. You can list whatever, anyone can list whatever they want and sell it to whoever they want. And all the all OpenSea does or any of these NFT marketplaces do is allow people to conduct that transaction. So it's like eBay, it's like any auction house, like Sotheby's or whatever. And the fact that they're those NFTs, because they list them, are security rather than Sotheby's is like anything sold by Sotheby, it, like a painting, is ridiculous in my mind. It's dumb. And it, it shows why people are not favorable on the current Democratic Party. Yeah, because this is, this is Gary Gensler. He is the chair, and he was given or wait put him in there was biden, biden i believe yeah it's but yeah he's considered them a democrat and put in by a democrat so this is what you're gonna get most likely assuming we don't get any bold state we'll see crypto is pumping a lot of money into u.s election so maybe if she gets she might change her stance maybe maybe just maybe yeah uh, it seems like a long shot though yeah isn't too far away is the fact that Solana is having their breakpoint conference in just 12 days as Robinhood announces that the Robinhood wallet will have support for Solana. So uh, Solana's got a couple bullish catalysts in the conference and this new support, although it shows that their chart against Bitcoin is, it looks like it's hit a top. So interesting. It definitely had a beach. It definitely pumped hard in the in the bear market and it has like crazy tokenomics that's the only reason i stay away from solana sometimes i want to participate on solana like if i decide to just do something on solana yeah not, never mean coins but i don't, don't like holding coins? solana i don't like holding solana per se i don't know there's something about Solana. i'm wary Talk. of part of it's that inflation rate talking yes. about meme coins and which you definitely do hold some Let's not lie. Well, then, then I don't want to talk. <laughs> That's good. Oh, Goon's got a huge X space on the 13th, Friday the 13th. It is a cross chain X space on the Quick Swap account with Cardano and the big meme coins from Cardano. That's going to be worth watching. The last aggregated oh, space had over 150,000 people show up to it. And oh, as you're doing it on the X space? Yeah. And oh, wow. it's really cool. And there's potential word Sandeep or the CEO of Polygon might show up. And yeah, Charles Charles, Charles, what was it, Caleb? Wasn't he like trying to get Charles on there too? Charles, yeah, like, Charles. Like, reached out to him on Twitter. I'm like, I like this guy. Oh, Let's yeah. We, we've Charles even, ha even has a direct text from several people. Uh, Wales oh. in Cardano asking him to show up. This uh, is a, yeah. a pretty big thing and we're and this is a sushi swap is releasing their own meme coin launch pad on september 10th so tomorrow wild to see sushi swap doing this considering most chains either have their own version of pop on uh or why sushi swap really what i guess i don't want to bomb on you but what is, is sushi swap polygon or they're a dex oh, almost about every chain at this point so like polygon, did they start on polygon they might have been. I don't know exactly where they started, but they were really popular on AVAX at one point, oh, Polygon, ARP, and a few others. So the, They're definitely around the last cycle. That's for sure. They've been around a while. Yeah, the, there was a big strategy with on AVAX with looping with them with Spell and Time at one point. And so SushiSwap is 
interesting they're they've been around and they've got some cool cross chain functionality too so but now launching their own meme launch pad funny speaking of stuff from last cycle that was around uh ftr phantom they're getting a sonic into the i think a s token uh but they're testing it went live last week so they're still cracking away yeah the other one from last cycle maker has rebranded to sky so lots of rebrands going on Maybe because the bull market's close and everyone wants to look like they're a new token. Yeah, these are timed. I don't think this is a coincidence. You know what I mean? They're strategically timed. I'm sure there's a lot of tokens swaying the loss, but they're actually waiting for it to start going. Absolutely. So they've rebranded to Sky, but what is getting people talking about is the new version of DAI, USDS, has a freeze function, which Mm -hmm. is built into USDC and Tether already. So if you were using one of those mainstream ones, but this was something that wasn't present in DAI previously, and that has gotten people a little bit worried and raised some eyebrows on what that might mean, but doesn't surprise me. Uh, might generally probably has to do with compliance issues uh, rather than anything else. Yes, yeah, it's, it's bending the knee, but not publicly coming out supporting Harris. We started the show in politics. Yeah, we did. We set the tone. It's better than some of the X faces I've been on, especially when around the poll migration, there was some. There's a lot of jokes about polls. By the way, we're sneaking in with macro. We'll go ahead and get started. Yeah. Okay. Looking at macro data this week, we've got a couple of big data points coming out with CPI and PPI, both coming out Wednesday and Thursday. CPI is expecting to tick down on regular CPI cores, but is expected to stay about the same. PPI is the reverse. PPI is expecting to be about steady and core maybe ticking down a bit it will be interesting to see what happens there i think if we do see expectations met at the very least if not beating expectations then it could fuel the idea of two basis point cut at at the next meeting which is on the 18th for the fomc the market is probably in a holding pattern at least partially watching to see whether it's one or two they're expecting 75% chance that it's one, 25% chance that it's two. This isn't financial advice, though. Like, these odds could change, and how what is said by Jerome Powell could influence whether we see one, two, whether Bitcoin goes up or down. And please be careful. Do you follow, like, the two-year, 10-year inversion? Because I guess that was, like, inverted for a long time, and now it's uninverted. So people are a little bit fearful over a recession. You ever look into that? I've heard of that's one of them that I've heard about a lot. Uh, It's become uninverted, which generally means that people are securing themselves into 10 years a bit more, which means that they're expecting the market to underperform, if I understand it right. And so the one the thing I heard about is that it could mean this when this has happened in the past, we've had recessions, whether we get a hard landing, soft landing, no landing, that kind of whole debate. But it seems like that would a recession would only fuel the rate cut environment, right? Absolutely. And the other thing that I we're hearing, at least in st- a little bit in the real estate world, is the 20, I think it's the 26 year cycle or something, but, or the 15 year cycle. It's yeah. essentially ex- based off of a whole bunch of different trends. Real estate will most likely tank hard in 2026. Late 2025, heading into 2026, suggesting a because of recession, and there's a whole bunch of recession fears there as well. But recession fears are playing a huge part in what's going on. With You're this saying market. when Bitcoin peaks, real estate will come down. Yeah, that, that's uh, that's what everyone's saying. <laughs> uh, but that's dreamy. <laughs> yeah, that's very dreamy. But what we're hearing, generally, what we're hearing is there's a lot of recession fears, and yeah. that recession fears and the economy slowing down could fuel money rate cuts at a faster rate with about 75% of participants or 65% of participants expecting three basis point cuts by November meeting. So including the November right. meeting, we're expecting three cuts, which so this be- is why, so this is why the elections are important because there's a bigger catalyst in the short term than this, because even if they cut rates, it's probably because our rate cuts get aggressive. And this has been seen in the past. It doesn't necessarily lead to an immediate spike in the price because the center is so bad. That's why they're cutting rates so aggressively, right? 
yeah it takes time for rate cuts to actually impact money supply and for that to those fears to be alleviated it'll be interesting to see what happens with with these rate cuts and with the election and and how that impacts bitcoin overall long term and bullish on bitcoin whether in the short term that plays out or not we'll see but worth watching all right thanks for listening please do your own research out there nothing we say is financial advice we are here for some education and entertaining content only thank you very much for listening and we'll see y'all next time Ciao.